Welcome to Scoop World Orders Wednesday. It is cranking up for the Michigan Wolverines again. Uh, we have uh, some breaking news, potential punishments that uh, we have uh, in the exclusive on. We're going to get into that. Some of the sources that we've heard, very high level people that know the commissioner of the Big Ten, uh, that know his personality and how he's going to react to maybe the biggest scandal in college football history. So we're going to get into all that. First, as always, thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of this channel. Uh, we appreciate you guys each and every night. If you enjoy this content, please click like. Click subscribe. Also, click the little alert bell. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. And let us know what you think of these potential punishments. I'm going to get right into it with Nevada. Nevada, um, you've got some very, very high up sources uh, with some of the major power players in college football. Uh, you got a very interesting nugget today, uh, recently, in the last few hours. I told me a little bit about it. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the commissioner of the Big Ten, what you've heard, uh, people that know him, and what his potential action could be against the Michigan Wolverines. Well, let's just talk about what, let's talk about, first of all, let's talk about things that haven't happened, okay? Um, you got some fanboy Michigan rivals, right? Henschke, Josh Henschke, or whatever it is, saying, oh, Tony's waffling. Michigan's backed him down, man. They've backed him down. Completely untrue. Completely, totally fake news made up story pandering to his, his, his thing didn't happen so the it just i because I, I just want to stay on this just a little bit because people write stuff now and it's like there's no accountability like the idea that josh henschke would have any insight into what tony Petit is going to be doing from the big 10 like the michigan insiders have the inside track on what inside tony's mind it's just like does anybody take that stuff seriously anymore? Does anybody read it? Because I'm not on those sites, but does anybody call them out and kind of go, Josh, dude, there's no way you could possibly have any insight to that. I'm going to share insight with you guys, with our, our listeners, and I'm going to tell you exactly where it's coming from. My information is coming from the broadcast side. The broadcast side are generally, they are stakeholders in all of this. They are stakeholders in all of this and that they, they have ownership in networks, they have a stakeholder in the broadcasting rights for these games. They have a stakeholder in seeing the, the Big Ten do well, that uh, discipline is handed out evenly, that the Big Ten is thought of favorably on the national scope. They're, they're concerned about the Big Ten brand. So those are the people that I'm talking to about this scandal. And those are the people that talk to, to the commissioner on a daily basis that have known him prior to him coming into the Big Ten. And what they're telling me, they think it's indefinite suspension. They think it's gonna that he's gonna come down. In the words of one of them, they said, "I think Michigan's gonna get it hard and sideways." And you can t take that whatever way you want to take it, but they think it's gonna be an indefinite suspension. But the idea that he's waffling, he's considered now that he's read that for those people that aren't that are out there on the internet, M Michigan has filed their response, and their response basically it's ten pages can basically be summarized as. Uh, the NCAA hasn't issued a final ruling. Um, uh, other people do this stuff all the time. And it, never once in there do they say, we didn't do it. They just say it mm -hmm. hasn't been adjudicated. Other yeah. people do it. And we're mad at them. And, and they should get, like, it's so lame. You would think they'd come out <laughs> with some sort of forceful, we didn't, you know, some forceful defense of Jim Harbaugh, of the program. Whatever, and as I, as I said in the board, if the entire case was just about one item, was a full-time staffer of Michigan on the sideline this year, disguised as a Central Michigan coach, recording and stealing signals from Michigan State, I think we'd all agree. Everybody that's listening to this, everybody that's on it, everybody would agree that, that is a fact, not a dispute. That happened. Okay, it's not an internet theory. It's not a wild idea. It's none of this garbage that's being spit out. Th that's just fact. We try to deal with facts this year. That's a fact. That happened. So if that's mm -hmm. the only fact that you have, Michigan should get hammered for this. Michigan yeah. should absolutely get hammered. Yep. So do I believe that it's gonna that the, the suspension is coming? Mm -hmm. Do I believe that it'll be indefinite? I I absolutely believe that it will. I don't believe for a second. When Tony Petiti sent this letter to them notifying Michigan of pending punishments, that he, the die was already cast. He wasn't sitting there going, man, I'm going to read their response and really look at He's already made up his mind. This is happening, but I got to follow the bylaws. I got to give them a chance to respond. And I got to look thoughtful in terms of 
you know, like I'm reading their response and then I'm going to drop the hammer of Thor on them. And that's what I, I think is going to happen. Um, and I think I, I know that's what the broadcast people are expecting. And I fully expect that to be the outcome. Yeah. And, and they really, they know him like, well, and they know that he is not, he does not play, you know, he's, this is, this is a black eye for, for the conference. This is a, a humongous black eye. I mean, this is like losing your eye if you're Michigan, just because again, this has been round the clock news cycle and every day new stuff comes out. Like, you know, there's this weird LLC with Blake Corum and, and Connor Stallions, which I think Blake Corum is lying through his teeth saying that he had nothing to do with this. I don't think that that guy would be ballsy enough to form a company with someone else's name on it and commit a felony in, in Wyoming. Uh, so it literally, it, none of it makes sense. Again, the paper trail of this thing is going to be amazing because it's all electronic. And it was also, you know, we've said a million times how ham handily it was done. It's amazing that these guys like use their own account. It's, I mean, it's like, it's like a dream for invest investigative journalists. Uh, it's going to be a dream when all this stuff comes to light. Cause there'll be a report that'll come out about all that they did. And, you know, they could say, oh, well, everyone does it. Purdue does it, whatever. But like, this guy was at a game this year on the sideline, a, a televised game, like a game on national TV. Because, you know, those Friday night games, like if Michigan State's playing a maximum, well, that's going to be on Fox or FS1 or somewhere. It's not going to be on like the Ocho or ESPNU or some channel you can't find. So uh, I think it's absolutely uh, it's bonkers. Do you think it happens this week, Nevada? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think the only, you know, Remember, all of this is an orchestrated dance. You know, before mm -hmm. the Big Ten sent this letter to, to Michigan, they had consulted with counsel. And, oh, I, I love the, again, I, I hate to just pick on this stupid Michigan in, insider, Josh. But he was like, oh, they don't want the smoke from Tom Mars and Williams Connolly. Like, like wow, like the Big Ten doesn't have lawyers or that they, you know, they're so oh, terrified no. of Williams Connolly. It's like, come on. They went out and consulted with lawyers. The lawyers oh. told them, they, they laid it out for them. This is what you have to do. You send them the, the notice on this date. They'll have until this day to respond. They'll respond you know, on this date. Uh, I think we're in the, Commissioner petiti has got to appear to be thoughtfully considering Michigan's response phase. So does that take 24 hours? Does that take 48 hours? Does that take 72 hours? I don't know. I, I don't know what he was advised on from the lawyers on that but I guarantee you it's on advice of counsel. And, and it's strictly about making this thing, you know, right, making sure you follow the bylaws. Because the only thing that Michigan, Michigan forfeited their rights to complain about this when they signed up to be part of the Big Ten Conference. They, mm -hmm. Their right to appeal, their right for, a, you know, an alternate person to adjudicate, you know, to hand out justice other than the commissioner. The only way that they can trip them up is if he didn't follow procedure. So he's being very careful to follow procedure, to be thoughtful, to have handled this in the right manner. And um, that's the phase, you know, that's what we told you when they were sending out the the notice of, of infractions. Uh, we didn't know how long Michigan would have to respond. We now know that the response was, you know, was today. And now it's just a matter of how long does Tony consider that before he drops the hammer on Michigan. I think it'll probably happen tomorrow but it could be Friday. Not not sure on that. And then and then at that point, the punishment is supposed to be, you know, swift. The, you know, the, the 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 affected teams are supposed to immediately enact the punishment on the uh, on the teams without appeal. So we'll see we'll see how it kind of plays out. What were your thoughts on the uh, the letter that the the legislators sent out? Because I thought that was they might as well have just drafted it with like Crayola crayons and like finger paint and stuff. Because that was the dumbest thing I think I've ever read in my life. But uh, state representatives, Phil Skaggs, Graham Pillar, Donovan McKinney, you know, a bunch of just total idiots uh, said it is ex essential to the Big Ten not take disciplinary action against the University of Michigan until the final results of the NCAA investigation are officially announced. And I'm just like, in what universe do you think that the NCAA has jurisdiction over the Big Ten? I mean, the Big Ten is like, the NCAA has never been less relevant and they're the slowest moving, worst operation in the universe. And then the Big Ten is... You know they've got a big brand they got to protect, man. I mean, this is this is big money. That's why I laugh when you talk about, oh yeah, the big the Big Ten scared of Tom Mars. I mean, yeah, the Big Ten just got the biggest DV, like TV deal in the history of the sport, so they got loot and they're ready to protect that brand. Um, but your thoughts on that letter? Because I thought that was absolutely hilarious. 
Well, again, everybody's pandering to their audience. Those guys are elected officials. So what, yes, what way better as an elected official than you go out and with some, you know, visible support of University of Michigan football and of Coach Harbaugh? I mean, it's just it, it, they're 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 playing politics, and you know they're putting stuff like that out there. Uh, you know, is it silly? Sure. Does it have any impact on the commissioner? Absolutely not. I mean, look, no. less than zero. It probably has the negative reaction to the one that they actually were were desirous of, in that there is no way that he is going to be seen as caving to pressure. I mean, think about it from his standpoint too. Let's just go from a human standpoint. You're new on a job, and you've got fourteen constituents. Okay, <laughs> and you know, soon to have, soon to have eighteen constituents, but right now you have fourteen. Now, 13 oh. of the 14 are coming and saying, look, this other one cheated. They cheated. They cheated us on the field. They cheated us. Uh, they affected our players. They affected our job. They affected our livelihood. They affected our postseason awards. They affected our participation in bowl games. Uh, they cheated. So, and then you've got the other side going, well, you know, we might have cheated, but the NCAA hasn't ruled on it yet. So what are you going to do? Are, are you going to lean to the side of, yeah, I'm going to throw my lot in with the one school that clearly cheated, you know cheated, and did it. Or are you going to throw your lot in with the other 13 schools? Just politically, it would be political suicide for him to do anything other than come down hard on Michigan. And don't think that's not a consideration. That's absolutely consideration. Look, he wants to do the right thing. He wants to do the fair thing. He wants to do the thing. But he wants to keep his job. And he wants to keep no. his political clout, and he wants to keep his, you know, if he goes against the other 13 members, against the other 13 coaches and presidents and athletic directors, man, he's made he's made 13, I mean, he, he might as well pack it up and go at that point, but he's made 13 enemies. Would you rather make 13 enemies in a 14 thing or one enemy out of 14? It's just math. Just give, just give me the one, baby. I, uh, yeah, it's, like I said, this thing is, uh, it's like you just constantly have to hit refresh because it's it's the most it's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. Because again, when everything comes out and you see how deep this thing really was, I think it's going to be fascinating that they thought they could get away with this and then they just kept doing it. Like I mean, it's not like they did it for one game. I mean, they're they're sending people to eight Ohio State games every game. Or they're sending to Penn State. I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it's like I I, I don't know what's going to be the next thing to drop. Like I mean, the Blake Corum. Uh, LLC thing with him is that's one of the funniest things I've ever thought. Like, why on earth Blake Corum would want to get into when he's like a guy that could win the Doak Walker, win the Heisman, would want to get into business with some intern is absolutely crazy to me. This guy would flush his whole career down the toilet. What, um, you know, so you think he's uh suspended or potentially potential stuff could happen in the next few days? You know, do you lay the ranch on Penn State at that point? Because I mean, I feel like you know, if they're missing their head coach and they've been a distracted outfit. They got to go to happy Valley. Penn state's a great team. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we beat them. Uh, they got their DN back, uh, chop Robinson who's really good. Uh, we knocked them out of the game. Um, but what are your thoughts on that game and how's it, how's it impacted with or without Jim Harbaugh? Well, I, I mean, again, let's just, you know, we always like to be honest with our listeners and that's what mm -hmm. they will always tell you the truth. And I mean, frankly, it's probably best for us if Michigan beats Penn State in the game. I mean, from, a, from an Ohio State standpoint, it's probably best if Michigan wins that game. Because if Michigan wins that game and we beat Michigan, then, I mean, look 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 at us, okay? If, yeah. if Michigan wins that game and then we lose to Michigan, well, we have the best we're, loss in the country. Yeah, we're the four seed. <laughs> we're the four seed at that yeah. point. Yeah. You know, so now if, we, if Penn State beats them, and then, you know, we lose to Michigan. Then you've got that three-team jobber jobber where Penn State goes on, but we're on them, but they beat us, but we beat them. I mean, so frankly, from a, from a selfish standpoint, it's better if Michigan beats Penn State. Um, so you've got oh. that one thing. Secondly, do I think this is a rallying cry for a team? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure they're oh, yeah. going – I mean, you, you saw how hard, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, Ryan Day was selling the Ohio against the world. Well, it's for them, it's got to be – Michigan against the world and blah. The, there's a basic problem with that, though. I don't think they're very good, okay? And I know that might be a hot take. I don't think they're very good. I don't think they've played anybody. 
I don't think they're battle tested. I don't think they're all that. Now, if they go into Happy Valley this week and win 50 to nothing, then we can get on on the, the podcast on Sunday night or Monday and we can just all laugh and we'll go, wow, Nevada, nice, nice take there. But I'm telling you, I don't think Michigan is all that. I don't. I, so I think <laughs> that at the, at the end of the day, you know, talent is you know, what carries out on all this stuff. And, you know, can distractions carry you through for as a team? How long can that provide to be a rallying cry? I don't know. But, you know, I, I just – what makes me sick in this whole thing is listening to dumb broadcasters get out there and talk about, oh, these poor kids, and can you affect this poor team? These guys were cheating. They were yeah. cheating this year. They were the direct benefactors of the cheating two years ago, last year, and this year. And mm-hmm. they all knew. They all knew if they didn't know, they should have known. If they didn't know, they had a strong suspicion of what was going on. Because otherwise, we've talked about this before, but you don't stand on the sidelines screaming out signals and doing all this unless you're darn sure that this guy's got it on lockdown, man. And as a defensive player, you are you are not going to sell your soul you know, blitzing to spots and going to things based upon what some intern's saying unless you're really, really sure no. that's where the play's going. Otherwise, you're going to look really dumb and, and really fast. So they all knew. They all should have known. They all must have known. And in the eyes of the rules, as we've talked about, it doesn't matter whether Harbaugh knew or not, he's culpable, 100%, mm-hmm. 100% responsible for what's going on right there. And that's why he's got a swing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, they've got great sports on the back. I've been saying that all week. I mean, it's like when you know exactly what's coming, it's it's impossibly easy to be great. Got some super chats. Appreciate you guys. If you guys have a question, super chat it. Automatically gets answered. We stop what we're doing. Give you guys the answer you guys are looking for. Matthew Peck, I appreciate uh, the super chat, my man. Just wanted to shout out the show. Great job, guys. Appreciate you guys so much. Again, we work hard at this, man, because we know that there's a lot of options for content. Everyone's got a million different things they can watch. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, we, we really work hard at this. We uh, we just love doing it. Love kicking it with you guys. So thank you so much. Uh, Taterbuck, I love that name. That's a great one. You're on here all the time. Appreciate you, brother, for being a regular. Uh, shout out from Parkersburg, Dub V U. I love that. Um, <laughs> Dub V U. Do you do you think? Although Michigan, players, yeah, I think a lot. Of, I do think a lot of Michigan players will hit the portal. Um, pending who they hire as coach, you know, and and also pending potential bowl bans, potential scholarship reductions. Because you know, if I'm a Michigan guy and they take 30 scholarships and you're down to 50, then it's like it's hard to to have be good when you know you saw what happened to Penn State. You see, like USC, the scholarship reductions. Nevada, do you think there's a mass exodus in the portal uh, for Michigan guys? I, I, yes, it's just a question of when that's going to be, and that will all be coincidental with the NCAA moving. And because I mean, when the NCAA stuff comes down, you, you have to remember everything we're talking about here in the next 24, 48 hours, or whatever, is all you know, uh, is the opening salvo. It's the top of the first inning. It's the first pitch of the game. Like it's in Fansville. You, let's not overreact on the first play of the game. It's going to burn everything down and throw the popcorn on the ground and stomp on the floor. I mean, when the NCAA thing comes down, it's absolutely, you know, bull bands. And it's just going to be a question of how many years. Um, I think scholarship reductions mean less in the NIL era because you yeah. can get around scholarship requirements by just funding guys with um, with scholarships via NIL money. And, yeah. you know, they, they serve the same purpose. So I think that the only thing you can really do is, you know, probably give Harbaugh a five-year show cause. Um, you give the, the program two or three years bull ban, lack of institutional control. And this is going to be mm. bad. It's going to be yeah. bad. And when that happens, that's when I think you see the mass exodus on the portal. But, you know, I mean, look, Michigan ma- magically got better without improving it with the same dudes without improving their recruiting. But somehow they got better. How was that? They cheated. So yeah. now that the cheating's, cheating's gone, they're going to, I'm telling you, Next year, watch Mich- Michigan next year. Let's see how good Michigan is next year. Uh, they made a big deal on this thing. It, they literally put this in the response to the, to the Big Ten. Since Connor Stallings has been gone, our margin of victory has gone down from 38 points a game to 34 points a game. Like that was some sort of 
evidence that see it had no impact on the game. Connor Stallions made no impact. We'll see how they do next year. Let's see if Michigan's still no. rolling along next year. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think so, boys. Yeah, and they've played like Purdue and like Michigan State, like just dead ducks. So I mean, come on. Uh, Super chat, J Matt two one seven. Appreciate you. Thank you for the five, brother. I love what you guys do. Thank you so much, Buckeye Scoop Rocks. Thank you again so much. Uh, you think the Big Ten would make the punishment more severe if UM fights back? I think they would. I don't know if I'd fight this one. I think that this is why I think a lot of universities, you know, every university has some high-end C-suite PR firm of gurus that say, okay, what's the best outcome? What's the worst outcome? Where are we at? And what are the percentages of it? And, you know, if I'm a PR firm, like saying, look, you got to get rid of Harbaugh, just fire him. Because yeah, he's not going to be here anyway. So if you guys want to ride it out, you can. But yeah, I'm. I just think that you know it's going to end bad. He's not going to be here next year. It's almost like a foregone conclusion. But do you think that the Big Ten would punish them more if they fought it, Nevada? Well, we have to remember there's two battles being fought. There's the public oh. PR battle that's being fought, and then there's the behind the scenes battle. What I'm being told is that the behind-the-scenes battle is very, 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 very different than the public battle. And yeah. we've talked about the number of people within the University of Michigan that aren't crazy about Jim Harbaugh. And then people can say, well, Nevada, that's their, that, there's no proof of that. Yeah, there is proof of that. They made him take a 50% pay cut yeah. to stay at the job. A 50% pay cut. <laughs> I have never heard of anything like that before in my entire life. They, they made a coach take a 50% pay cut. So just imagine the kind of acrimony. just like pe pe the, the people genuinely on the Michigan side do not like Jim Harbaugh, but they realize that he's got the support of the masses of the crazies. And so they have to cater to the crazies because if you're an AD or if you're a university president and you don't show undying support for Michigan football, especially in a year where they're ranked number three in the polls, have their best chance since the, you know, uh, Woodson years of winning a half national championship or whatever they're, they're going to do, then you're done. You are done. You will not survive at Michigan. You cannot be anti-football at Michigan when you're finally beating your rival, when you're finally have returned to some sort of prominence and have any type of tenure at Michigan. You, you Your job will be effectively done the minute that that went down so every time you see them saying something every time you say they have to do that that is self-preservation now what are they saying separately i'm hearing it's very different you know will we ever really know not sure maybe we will but yeah i i, I have lived long enough and i've been through enough intrigue to know that these things are always game of thrones and when people say stuff to your face man yeah, just remember what Littlefinger, you know, said to, to oh, yeah. Ned Stark before they cut it. You, you, your mistake, you shouldn't have trusted me, you know, they, before they cut his head off. I mean, yeah. that that stuff happened. That that if, if anybody who's out there knows it's a big business knows what I'm talking about. They know that is the way that it works. That's the way that's going down. So I don't I don't get hung up too much of the thing. I just think it makes Michigan look absolutely ridiculous. I think it makes them look like like they've sold their soul to football with they don't care about the, everything that they've said about Michigan football is a lie. Everything that yeah. they have integrity, that academic standards matter, that we do things the right way, that we're Michigan men. All of it's a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. And I, and you know, it's kind of like when you, when you were little and you figured out that there really wasn't a Santa Claus and you were sitting there. I, Cause I remember where I was, I was walking down the street. My brother told me, and I ran all the way home and it, it was devastating, man. It was like, but I remember, I remember to this day, I remember the exact moment when I found out that there wasn't a Santa and um, we were, we were actually, we were, we were in Hawaii. My dad was stationed at Hickam Air Force Base and we were out there and it was just, it was, it was crushing to my soul. Um, that's how it kind of is like for Michigan fans now, when you realize that everything you believed about Michigan football is a lie and that's hard. I understand that it's hard, but you know, hey, I, 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 I got through the whole Santa thing and stuff, and, and you'll get through this too, so just be strong, man. Connor Stallions, Mall Santa. Because he can take the video or the little photo that you get with the kid. That would be perfect. He's got the talent. Um, 
Yeah, I, I appreciate these super chats. These things are, are just flowing in. Appreciate you, my man. Uh, I want to say, is this loud? I was going to say, shout out, Virginia. Appreciate you, brother, for that. If you have a question, toss it on there. Shout out our boy, David Penteric. Thank you, brother. As always, you are the absolute best. Uh, the the first member of Buckeye Scoop. If you guys got the trivia question, it was David Penteric. So thank you, brother. Uh, NH, appreciate that um, as well. Thank you for the five. David, my brother, you're the best as well. Uh, Nevada, it seems like the scandal runs super deep. How deep do you believe it goes? And do Harbaugh and, and do Harbaugh or his OCDC coach? There again, well, I'm going to say something real quick before I hand this to you because you made a fantastic point about the 50% pay cut because they've never had more money than they do right now at Michigan and every Big Ten school. This new TV deal, record everything, record attendance, pr- ticket prices through the roof. Everything's everything's more expensive than it was a year ago, five years ago. And coaching salaries have absolutely exploded across the board. Like, I'm talking Jim Bowman's last year in 2011 as the offensive coordinator at Ohio State, he made $350,000. Now, Parker Fleming, who is the last coach on the staff, the number 10 coach, makes five hundred grand, And the coordinators make $2.5 million each. So, you know, this is like, there's, there aren't many industries where, where salaries have gone up eightfold in 12 years. So... When Jim Harbaugh got asked to take a 50% pay cut at a time where everybody else is getting these mountainous, monstrous raises, Jimbo Fisher signs for $90 million and, you know, Ryan Day's up to 12 or whatever. It's like, you know, and they make you take a pay cut. Like, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had jobs, you know, if someone told me to take 50% salary, like I'm out. See ya. It's been real. I'll go find another job. I'll find someone that actually wants to pay me what I'm worth. Um, but that was a fantastic point, buddy. Cause I mean, I can't imagine the bitterness and the acrimony on both sides that they say, Hey, we know you're a Michigan guy. We know you played for Bo Schembechler, blah, 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 blah. But if you want to stay here, you're going to go from, you know, 10 to five or eight to four or whatever the number was, because that, I mean, that would set anybody off. I mean, there aren't, there aren't many coaches that would have stayed. I don't believe, especially a guy who's coached in a Super Bowl within the last 10 years. Um, but Nevada, your thought on, uh, again, I'll repeat the question. Nevada, it seems like this one's super deep. How deep do you believe it goes? And does Harbaugh and or his DC or OC coach there again? Your thoughts? Well, I, look, I, how deep does it go? Well, I, I, I can't be any more specific than everybody knew. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh knew. The coordinators knew. The other assistants. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. Everybody was in on the joke. Do I think Jim Harbaugh's dumb and was directly tied to the scandal? No, no. He's, he, you know, I mean, he's strange, but he's not dumb. And, you know, he would have worked through an intermediary. Let's just call him Jay Harbaugh. And um, <laughs> Jay Harbaugh would have been the guy, not his real name, but Jay Harbaugh would have been <laughs> the, the guy that would have handled the Connor Stallions project. They, and they probably had some, you know, really tricky, you know, code name for it, like, sign stealing 2023 or something tricky like that that <laughs> nobody could ever crack into and figure out what that meant but um yeah I, they all knew do i think the coordinators are done too the, the problem is under the under the rules right now the coordinators are not responsible directly for wrongdoing but the head coach is so unless they can tie the coordinators directly to it and they and Remember, the Big Ten is no investigative arm. So the only thing the Big Ten's operating off of right now is information that's been publicly available to them or information provided them by the NCAA. Uh, and the NCAA investigation was all part of this Weiss, Weiss, uh, computer crimes, you know, the SCA of you know, sex crimes against minors uh, investigation that was going on when they were uh, cyber sleuthing on his, on his computer. So I think for, uh, for the coordinators, do they get banged? I mean, I'd be surprised, but I, I but I don't know. I, I don't on the punishments. I don't know. The only thing I know is what the broadcast guys are telling me, and they do not believe that it's going to be light at all. They mm-hmm. they do not believe it's going to be light, and they laugh at the notion that Tony Petiti is in any way intimidated by Michigan's <laughs> lawyers, the response, or that he's waffling. Or that you know somehow uh, that somehow they backed him off or anything like that they're like, dude, look, 
coming. This was decided a long time ago. And, it, you know, the only thing that's changed is the date that he's going to put on the letter sending this thing to Michigan. And um, we'll all wait and see because I, you know, I tell you when I know, I don't know what this is going to be, uh, but I would expect it's Harbaugh specific. It's bad for him. But I think the, the, uh, the coordinators survive you know, for now. The coordinators survive for now. But their, their day is coming. Uh, but that's probably more of an NCAA thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, another super chat. Again, if you guys have questions, super chats automatically answered. Uh, Coach Rippin Roy, thank you for the five. Big change in national media coverage supporting Michigan the last few days. They're using the news of OSU records giving Purdue signs an absolution. I I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I, I just think that, you know, when you hate somebody like Ryan Day and Ohio State hates Michigan – you know, if anybody that, you know, I mean, he probably knows Jeff Brom. Um, obviously, he knows Greg Shiano. Like, I mean, those guys will hump each other as much as possible to beat Michigan because they hate Michigan. So I just, I don't buy that. Nevada, do you buy that at all? I mean, I know that that's like, you know, Michigan's like, hey, well, these guys jaywalked or, you know, these guys did something that's literally legal. Like, you can get signs and get notes and that type of thing. You just can't do it the way they did it. You can't video it. You can't go to a game. Can't be on the sideline at Central Michigan in sunglasses at night. Um, but your thoughts on that, Nevada? Do you feel like there's been a big change in the national perception? No. It's, all it is is people don't want to read or hear the same thing every time. So if, if there's 100 articles that are coming out saying Michigan should get the death penalty, Michigan should death penalty, Michigan death penalty, then people tune out. They don't want to hear that anymore. So if you're that you know, enterprising writer slash broadcaster or whatever, <laughs> you're like, you know what I'll do? I'll take the opposite side. I'll say Michigan no. shouldn't get the death penalty. Michigan, really, this is a witch hunt. This is a, And now I'll know I'll get all the people that were on the other side. They'll be fired up. And then I'll get the other people that'll be, like, cheering me on. So, look, it's a business. Nothing's changed, per se. Yeah. Media is dead in 2023, okay? Everything is entertainment. Everything is clicks. Everything is dollars. There's There are no people left in media that have a genuine bone in their body. They don't believe any of the stuff they're saying. Even no. when they say this stuff, you know, when I see Stephen A. Smith or Feinbaum or any of those guys, you know, talking about how Michigan should swing and get the death penalty, look, I, I love it because it, it, it appeals to what I want, believe. But do I believe them? No. Do I believe that they could equally argue the other side with, with total enthusiasm tomorrow if they wanted to? 100%. Because they're all shills and they, they're all just kind of dancing for the man. And that's what they do. And and that's okay. But when you know that, it makes it easier when you see this. So, no, nothing's changed. It's just they're trying to take the flip side of the argument to to, to garner more attention and, and more clicks. And, and, again, like, for a, lot of the, you know, for a lot of you people that don't know, like, when you watch, like, these these idiotic shows that are, like, the lowest form of broadcasting, like Pardon, My Take, you know, Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, that's all, like, just fabricated. It's like they all take sides. Like, if me and Nevada wanted to make sure and say – okay, uh, Nevada, we're, we're going to argue today. What's more important, the peanut butter or the jelly? You take the jelly, I'll take the peanut butter, and we'll debate it. You know, and then we'll yell at each other and scream. And, you know, it, like that's it's all fake. You know, that's the thing that's funny about those shows is they think that those guys really hate each other. They laugh all the way to the bank. Now, Shannon Sharp hates Skip Bayless. I mean, that's or that's absolutely a fact. But, you know, it just, I don't know. Like, like I, I never got into that stuff because it's all, it's all theater. It's all just who can be the loudest dumbest moron and they cater to the lowest the lowest common denominator i mean i but hey they're laughing all the way to the bank because those guys are the highest paid guys at their networks yard varks lawn care appreciate you my man shout out from indy love indy st elmo's in the house three hours away uh home of the big 10 title game what do you think about the young defensive players kenyatta jermaine uh hartford hero canoe where did king kirk go i think i don't know where caden is caden has kind of disappeared after he was rolling a little bit more um you know, Caden's not a real big dude. So, like, when you get to these physical, like, you, you play a Rutgers band, they got a massive offensive line. They get that 6'8, 370 pound left tackle. Like, that ain't Caden's ball of wax right there. You want him to rush the passer, be quick. Uh, you know, they're using him as a spot fullback uh, in that in that goal line thing that I think that they finally can because it was terrible. Um, but, you know, Kenyatta, I think, has a bright future. I think that. He isn't consistent enough yet, but he he gets some splash plays. He's a long guy. We're going to need him next year because, I mean, JT's gone. Jack might be gone. Kenyatta's going to be that dude next year for sure. Jermaine Matthews is an absolute phenom superstar. Um, again, you know, competitive. Like, the word I get when I, when I talk to people, the word he hates about him, 
ultra competitive, like competes in everything. And that is the, the special spice that gets you on the field early when you're not scared of to check Marvin Harrison in one-on-ones. You're not scared to check Emeka Igbuka in one-on-ones. A lot of freshmen, they show up, they're scared, scared to death. I mean, it's intimidating. Like my, when my freshman year, dude, like I had to block Will Smith. It was returning all American could have been a first round pick came back for a senior year. Then is a first round pick. Like that's why I had to block every day in practice. Like when I was on the scout team going against big Will, And it was like, if he wanted to murder me, he could murder me. He was an absolute monster. One of the best players in school history and a guy that I absolutely love because he taught me so much about offensive tackle that it was crazy because he, you know, what do you look at? You know, what footwork, you know, what do you study? I mean, he was a genius on the field, but he was also an absolute monster. He was a terrorizer, but I mean, it was, it was amazing. My senior year, my last game when we lost that, uh, that national championship game at LSU, he was playing for the Saints. He was our honorary captain. So I actually walked off the coin toss with Will Smith, who was probably my favorite Ohio State player ever because he taught me how to be a good offensive tackle just because he was so he was so smart and he knew the game so well. And again, you know, I always tell people, Ohio State, when you, if you go to play football at Ohio State, it's like Johnny Cash. It's get tough or die. It's like a boy named suit. You get tough or you die because like, you're either going to get tough and you're going to get better or you're going to die. Cause I mean, you show up there, man, and you got to go block chase young for day one, you know, you either, you either figure out how to block him or they'll go get somebody else to do it. You know, and you can go sit on the bench and drink Gatorade. Um, Nevada. Uh, and I, I think, uh, uh, Malik Hartford, you know, he had that start and it didn't go well, uh, but he's back in the mix. I think our, our secondary is incredibly deep right now, given how many injuries we've had and how consistently they've been. I think hero canoe is coming on. That's a guy, big plugger. I mean, he was fantastic in camp his last year at Ohio State. You know, he's a, he's a kid from overseas. He's got a lot of upside, a lot of potential. Um, but Nevada, what are your thoughts on some of the young players on defense? Well, let me just give you a name. We don't talk about a lot, but Gabe Powers. Man, Gabe Powers yeah. coming coming on like a hurricane. Played, yeah. played really well. Going to be a heck of a player at Ohio State. C.J. Hicks. I mean, you look at all the young talent, you know, it's it's crazy how we've kind of stockpiled guys and they're all learning the system. You have to remember this is a system defense. A lot less. I mean, when guys are going out, when they're blitzing, they're not just freelancing. When when Andy Katz and Lawyer played at Ohio State, it was just Andy go see ball, see ball, get ball, seek destroy, run around, turn it. Everything now is orchestrated. Everything is like a like a dance. This guy goes yeah. here, and you, even under our blitzing, you see our blitz pack. Our blitz packages are designed. Well, one guy's picking the guys and holding the defensive linemen when the other guy's running free in terms of doing so. I mean, like, it's it, less flash plays, less flashy stuff, but everybody in the right spot. That's why this defense is so fundamentally sound and so fundamentally good. And all these young guys are being brought up in the system. And so um, I'm excited about the future. But, yeah, the uh, the young guys are coming in, stepping in, and they're not missing a beat. And that's, that's always fun to see. Well, and defensive scheme now in modern football has to be airtight because of uh, the evolution of the RPO. I mean, you can't be out there freelancing and you got to tackle the dive and then, you know, you decide not to tackle the dive. They hand it off. They get 60 yards or, you know, so, I mean, the way football is played on offense now, you can't freelance. I mean, if you freelance, you're going to get absolutely slaughtered by good offensive coaches, good coordinators. Um, if you're going against equal talent. All right. Uh, Geodet, appreciate you, my man. Thank you. Let me load this thing up. Geodet42, thank you for the five. Appreciate you, my man. Jim Trussell to sacrifice for two times. Yeah, it was. Urban Meyer for coming for a friend. That pales in comparison to this. Jim Harbaugh has to be turned. I agree. I mean, like, I I lived the Trussell thing. And it's, the funniest thing was, you know, they call it Tatgate and they traded, you know, little, I mean, gold pants, for those of you who don't know, aren't made of real gold. They're made of like spray painted metal. And so, you know, they're not really that valuable. They might cost 20 bucks to make or something. So, you know, when I, when someone says, hey, I'll do that for $5,000 worth of tattoo work. Like, I mean, and you're a young kid and you're poor and you want a sweet tattoo. Like, I mean, it's something you own. I mean, in any other walk of life, if you trade something you own for something that you want more than what you own, like, that's fine. Except the NCAA and their stupidity, like, they're like, oh, well, that's like, but then like, I remember when I would watch games, like in the SEC or whatever, and like, I would see the amount of tattoo work some of these guys had, like arms sleeved up, neck tattoos. And I'm like, how are these guys paying for all that stuff? You know, I mean, that's, I mean, if you get a good tattoo, it's 10, 15, 20, $50,000, depending on how big it is and who's doing it. But it's a lot of money. But I totally agree he has to be terminated. Uh, appreciate you, my man. Um, Nevada, obviously, you're in agreement he needs to be terminated as well, correct? 
I mean, what? Yeah, I mean, he, he, oh. I, but again, I think Michigan knows that they've got to save the brand. They've got to do it. They just got to. They've got to placate the crazies while getting rid of Jim. And Jim's got to watch it because this this there's precedent for this punishment to follow him into the NFL. So it's uh, it's going to limit some of his options going forward as well. And uh, that's going to be an issue for him. Absolutely. Uh, Bruce Barleg, uh, thank you for the 10. Appreciate you, my man. As always, thank you for being in here. Uh, oh, my God. This is great. Connor's HOA press. Connor signs HOA press. That's amazing. <laughs> What a great name. Uh, thanks for the five, my man. Theories on where the money was coming in from started in LLC, his $480,000 house. Mom and dad's mortgages got paid off two weeks after the LLC started. I have no idea. Like, I don't know his background. I don't know his what his parents do. I don't know. I mean, I know that, like, if you're making 50, here, here's the thing I do know, because I was once a young coach when I was working at Ohio State. Like, I, I had a house and owned a house because I played in the NFL and I had money. So I bought a house in Columbus and I liked Columbus. Like I really, the biggest reason I didn't stay in coaching is because I didn't want to move all over the country 50 times over the next 50 years. Like, cause, cause if you're a coach, you're either, you either have been fired or you're going to get fired at some point in your career, you're going to get fired and you're going to have to pull your family up and go move somewhere and do whatever. So, you know, for a young coach who's making 55 grand to buy a $500,000 house is insane unless he's getting money from somewhere or some donor or whatever. But again, I don't know his background. I mean, he might have a rich dad or uncle or grandpa or, you know, so, I mean, but I mean, he bought it at the top of the, I mean, the interest rates are like 9%. So, I mean, that's, that's a massive mortgage for, you know, for a house in Ann Arbor. But uh, Nevada, do you think that that's fishy? You know, obviously 500,000 house, then his mom and dad's mortgages both get paid off two weeks after the LLC starts. I mean, it's, it's weird, but you know, I, 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 I want us to stay away from like the baseless speculation stuff. Because yeah. 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 I totally I agree. Like, I feel like when we get into that, we sound like those stupid Michigan people and I read their stuff yes. and I'm like, this is completely utterly baseless and without any, that. and I don't have any facts on that. So does it look fishy to me? Yeah. Sure. Would I, would I like to hear more about that? Absolutely. Does the Blake Corm LLC thing and the, the whole reconditioned vacuum cleaner thing seem super odd? Yeppers, it does. <laughs> but uh, I think we've got juicier stuff. I mean, it's like, you know, you've got this big old steak on the table and we're going to we're going to fight over, you know, uh, you know, SpaghettiOs over here at the other table. I, I want to uh, keep our eye on the steak. Yeah, I, I totally I, I totally agree. And it's like the. The used vacuum thing is the most bizarre. It's like, it'd be like if we were set up like a used tire yard. Like I drive past them, like new tires aren't really that expensive. And it's like, why would I want used tires? They're just going to die. I, it's, it makes no sense. So we'll stay on topic. Uh, this is another great name. Pooh Beard 12. <laughs> Appreciate my man. How do the special teams quote air quotes, air quotes, miscommunications keep happening. We are statistically terrible. Should we hire stallions to teach us our own signs? Wow. What a question. <laughs> I mean, honest, honest to God, man. I like, I love this show just so you guys know, like we love doing this. This is an absolute blast. But when I get a question like that, should we hire stallions to teach us our own signs? It makes our entire night. Cause that is absolutely hilarious. And thank you for putting that on here. Um, I, I just don't know. Like, I mean, in what universe would a punter think it's okay to take off on your own? And, and like, you know, Ryan said, you know, well, it's overloaded one side and you see it. And, but like, you got, I mean, that can't happen. You know, I mean, again, like we blew one against Michigan that was wide open that they didn't scout. They didn't have, because here's the thing. This is something I meant to say the other night. I didn't say it. So the fake punt that we screwed up against Michigan last year, like, the reason why that worked is because when you're punting and you run a fake punt, the whole punt team huddles up on the sideline before they hit the field and you tell them what you're doing. You say, okay, regular punt, fake punt. You know, that is the only, and guess what? When you do that, there's no signal. So that's why it was so wide open. There's no signal. Like, I mean, like that, I, I was like, God, I wonder why Michigan didn't like pick off that side. I was like, well, cause you don't signal that you literally have everybody. They have this big mat that goes like one to 11. So you can count, you make sure you have all 11 guys on the punt team and you say regular punt, regular punt. Hey, uh, red fake, red fake, black fake, whatever the fake is, you know, pirate ship, whatever the fake is. And, and then you run out on the field and I was like, well, that would have worked cause they didn't have that sign, but 
What a what a great question. I, I gotta I gotta get through these. These things are stacking up. Appreciate you guys for these super chats. These are awesome. Uh, Nate Lawson, appreciate you, brother. Um, uh, did Michigan's response letter make the situation worse? They basically admitted to cheating. Um, what are your thoughts on that, Nevada? I think it's a non. I I think I think I don't think it made it better. I don't think it made it worse. I think the uh, the die has been cast. I don't think the commissioner has been particularly swayed by anything. I, you know, I, the release of that is strictly for the court of public opinion. And, uh, you know, I, 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 like I said, having not seen the letter and gone through the letter in detail, just seeing the summaries of it, it seemed embarrassing. It was, it was like, it was like a, a joke that they actually put that out. Um, so do I think that's going to be particularly persuasive to people? I don't, but it's this, this whole thing's been kind of a Rorschach test for, for people. They see what they want to see in this, and uh, you know, you know, maybe I'm blinded by my hate for Michigan, but um, I, I found all of their uh, explanations and defenses of this kind of pathetic and and, and kind of embarrassing. And so uh, I'm sure I'll read the letter and, and feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, I I hate Michigan too, so I love watching them twist in the wind like this. But you know, I don't think the letter is relevant. I just think it's you know they're trying to put up their dukes and they had to respond, so they had to put something out there. But you know, I mean. Again, there's nothing really to admit to at this point. When your staffer was caught on, you know, on in 4K cameras on Fox at the West or at the Central Michigan game, excuse me, like in his spy glasses, and you know, again, like you know, when you do this stuff in big time college football, these games, there's 10 million cameras in all these games, you know, so there's gonna be a lot of cool angles of all the stupid stuff that these guys did. Um, Jim Foster, appreciate you, my man. All this chatters about other teams is just Michigan trying to muddy the waters of the court of public opinion. It's a PR move. I totally agree. I think they're like, oh, well, everybody does it. No, they don't. Not not like that. Not like, not like how you guys did it. But like that, that's what it is. It's, it's kind of like, you know, people that don't watch our podcast, they don't listen to Buckeye Scoop. They're not on Buckeye Scoop. Like you guys are the smart ones because like you guys aren't the stormtroopers. Like that's like the stormtroopers where he says, these aren't the droids you're looking for everyone does it like they do like the jedi mind trick like that's what they're trying to do but you guys are too smart for that because you guys are here so you guys are like the real jedis um nevada do you agree is this a pr move yeah and it's just it's just it's a bad one and it's 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 just sad i mean it's just sad and they're you know you you just wish that they were i I don't know I, i i just i just find the whole gnashing of the teeth and the the we're the victims in this thing to be just so uh so unseemly but what you know that that's michigan i i totally agree um nikki buckets appreciate you my man thank you for the five no more illegal um scouting is a big one i totally agree uh, but i worry they already have enough on osu and psu in 23 uh did they scout osu enough in 23 so it's still not fair see i again ryan and those guys ryan and justin fry and those guys they're going to have all new everything, all new signals. They might do wristbands. They could do a short huddle. There's a lot of ways you can you can do it to mitigate this stuff. Um, again, you don't want to screw everything up. Like, you still want to run your system. But I guarantee you that Ohio State's going to be loaded for Bear to counteract any possible sign stealage with these guys. And, and again, I would bet my house that these guys have changed their signals substantially, you know, since all of this broke. You know, because you can do it. I mean, you put wristbands on. There's a lot of ways to counteract it. The, the, the problem is, is like, you know, with a lot of the signaling, it's because we like to do tempo. We like to go no huddle. We like to go fast. We like to do look back. And the only way you can get those plays in is by signaling. So, I mean, that's why it's so prevalent. Like back in the day, you know, with Tress, we, we wore wristbands and we huddled. So, you know, th- those are harder to pick off. Like with a wristband, like if you're, you know, your run to the right is like number one or whatever, then, you know, he just reads wrist one. Okay, run to the right. Break. You know, and you can't pick that. And then against Michigan, we would change the wristbands and the numbers at halftime just because we'd, we'd scramble up the numbers so that they couldn't get a read on what we were doing in our signals. Um, all right. So we got uh, – and appreciate that, my man, Nikki Buck. Yeah, Buck yeah, yeah but, it, but, it, but, but isn't the big – I mean, to me, the big point is going to be they're not going to have the guy on the sideline watching the signals in real time – calling it out to the DC and the OC that that's, that's the big thing. It's, it's one thing knowing the signals. It's another thing having a guy watching them. Cause you have to watch them. You got to be on the Michigan sideline. Okay. You can't be in the press, but you're not gonna be able to see it from the press box. You got to be on the Michigan sideline and you have to be in a position to communicate it directly to the OC or the, or the DC in real time. And yes. that's part of a guy standing there in terms of doing it. 
I'm so yes. it's just the logistics of this that can't happen now because now Mich- there's gonna be seven thousand cameras on Michigan looking to see if they've got you know Connor Stallions that they're maybe oh my goodness you know what they could do if Connor Stallions could dress up like a Central Michigan coach and then be on the sideline and people wouldn't even know that it was him the, he oh could do God. that oh my god if there's a Central Michigan coach on the sideline dressed up in Central Michigan <laughs> gear with a hat and stuff standing next to the guys. People call it out, man. People, somebody call it and say, hey, that Central Michigan coach is not supposed to be on the five mile like that. He can, I mean, he can go to the Michigan State game because it is a night game, so he can rock the sunglasses at night look again. Um, yes, that one's my favorite. Uh, w Buckeye, I appreciate you, my man. I know you're in here all the time. appreciate all of our regulars. Uh, do you think we will be in the huddle for cheat again? I don't. No, I think we could. I think Penn State huddled against us more than they have when they played uh, here at the Shoe. I think part of it was to help Drew Aller with the noise, but I also think it was, you know, they're, they're probably, everyone's kind of sketched out right now by by all of the uh, the sign stealing. So, I don't know. I think it's uh, it's one of those deals where, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think it'll just look like business as usual. Um, I'm sure that they'll have, you know, the, the signalers all mixed up and ready to go. But, you know, it, it'll be it'll be fascinating. Again, this is... This might be end up being the most hyped Ohio State. If they're both undefeated, man, and you know, I, mean, I don't think Duke's going to beat Georgia, but you know, they're going to be you know two ish, three ish in the polls. You know, three, four, whatever. They're going to be t- if they're both undefeated. You know, if they get through Penn State, um, you know, I, I think and honestly, I want them to beat Penn State. Like I want them to be undefeated, and I want us to beat them up there undefeated. That would be the ultimate win uh, for Ryan Day and for those kids uh, on the team. Uh, Nevada. Uh, we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, any final thoughts? Another great day on the scoop. Uh, a lot of craziness going on. Uh, the message board is absolutely bonkers right now. Uh, but any final thoughts? Well, there was an article that came out that I talked about how they were going to allow uh, in-helmet communication for like the, the playoff games or, you know, the postseason. And I found that to be, you know, kind of interesting, you know, given the timing on all this and, you know, eventually, that's the ultimate way to get around this is to allow in, in human, you know, in helmet communication. So I think that's, that'll be fun. And that'll be interesting to see how they do that through the playoff. Uh, one, two, I thought your point against the, the, about the fake punt last year against Michigan was so good because it's true. It's like, that's the one play they got fooled on the whole game was that's the one where we were sitting down. And it, it was, it was the only play in the second half that was wide open and it worked. Yeah, I mean, it yeah, would have worked. worked. I mean, yeah, there's nobody there, you know? Yeah, yeah, the one time, and so we get them on that one. Uh, and third, yeah, I think stuff's coming down um, as early as tomorrow, so stay tuned. We're all going to be uh, waiting. This is this like Christmas Eve, waiting yeah. for uh, for Commissioner Petiti to drop the hammer? So Yeah, so we'll, we'll be tuned into BuckeyeScoop.com uh, again. Appreciate you guys, as always, kicking it with us again. Uh, it's going to be a wild one tomorrow. I'm really excited about it. Uh, join BuckeyeScoop.com if you guys want a great Christmas present. Uh, it is the best thing you'll ever buy because people are on it all day and it is always cranking. It's like a club that never closes. So love to have you guys join the Buckeye Scoop family. It is an absolute blast. Uh, I haven't had many people that join and leave because once they get in there, man, they see why it's so fun uh, to kick it and talk football all day with us. So we appreciate you guys as always. If you enjoy this content, leave us a like, click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. I love seeing my West Virginia folk in here. Uh, you know, Southern Ohio people, you guys are the best. So, uh, again, Virginia, shout out all you guys uh, watching Indy. Um, you know, obviously, Maslin, Canton, you know, Olin, Tangi, uh, Florida, Texas. We appreciate all you guys. Thank you guys so, so much. Uh, but with that being said, thank you, Buckeye Nation, and thank you, Scoop Family. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Uh, same time, round seven ish, we'll be going live and uh, we'll be taking your questions. So, thank you guys. Go, Bucks. <laughs>